Hello there, YouTube. This is Zoo Tycooner Steve, and welcome to episode 3 of the Reart Park Let's Play. Uh, today we are going to be making an exhibit for a fairly recently extinct animal, that is the thylacine. And you might see here I'm actually starting a little earlier than I usually do. Uh, usually when I begin my Let's Plays I kind of have like the uh, outline for the exhibit marked up, but uh, this time I decided to go ahead and include it here. Uh, mostly because I made a lot of mistakes here trying to get this exhibit the way I wanted to look in my head, so I thought it might be a little more interesting to see that. Um, basically, my biggest problem was I kept making it way too big here. Um, so you'll see I'm going to kind of... Uh, first, once I realized that here, I started by uh, trying to put down the pathway outline, kind of where I wanted the guests to be able to go. And then we are going to kind of uh, keep scaling it back down. Um, the main reason why I had so many mistakes is that uh, when I went, I'm saying uh, a lot, so I do apologize for that. But uh, when I started this exhibit, I thought what I really wanted to do to kind of give it a unique look is to have two viewing areas. One was going to be sort of just a regular outside where you see the animals walking around, and then I was going to have a completely indoor exhibit. But I didn't want the uh, thylacines to walk directly from one to the other. I kind of wanted them to have to go through like a little uh, cage area or inside area uh, that wouldn't be accessible to uh, the guest. So I wanted to make a pathway that they could both walk through that would work correctly and would allow me to connect these two areas. So you can see I'm kind of scaling down here both the size of it and I'm going to be trying to get this pathway to work correctly. Uh, and by pathway I don't mean the pathway for the guests. I'm talking about a pathway that I'm eventually going to make for our thylacines. Uh, and uh, eventually what I ended up doing, I figured it out that I had to flip the inside area so it was going east-west instead of north-south, which I finally figured out here. And you can see that uh, this is basically how I make every exhibit, uh, you just don't see it on camera, is that I kind of just keep playing with it and tweaking around the edges until it looks right for me. And at this point I'm just kind of shrinking down, uh, I'm changing around, it's the right size now, but uh, I need to make sure that the pathways would actually work for what I'm talking about. And hopefully you'll be able to see at the end what I'm going on about here. But, um, uh, yeah, I've, I, doing this part, I haven't done, like, the final walkthrough, so I'm almost 100% sure that the thylacines can walk through where I want them to right now. Uh, but, uh, I might have to tweak it between now and that final walkthrough where I'm not doing the speed build. But anywho, that's the idea, is that we're going to make this little area perfect for the, uh, indoor and outdoor viewing of the thylacines here. Uh, you might be asking, what is a thylacine? Uh, it's probably not as popular as a dodo, so as part of the educational segment of this series, I am going to try to tell you a little bit about the animals that we're bringing back. Uh, like I said in the last episode, the idea of this park is to try to bring back uh, or make exhibits for animals that actually coexisted with modern humans. Um, so thylacines definitely on the planet uh, when modern humans were around. They are a carnivorous marsupial, or I might sh I probably should say were a carnivorous marsupial, which makes them kind of weird uh, to begin with. They're also actually called uh, Tasmanian tigers because they have stripes on their backs, but in fact they're not tigers at all. Uh, like I said, they're marsupials, but from a niche standpoint, they actually fill in the same role like a wolf would. A wolf wood that came out, it's funny sounding. The same role that uh, wolves do in places of the planet where we have uh, an placental animals. It's actually a really cool example of convergent evolution, where because the there were no wolves in Tasmania, uh, that niche was left available, and a completely different species evolved to fill it. And um, like I did, they are fairly recently extinct to the point where uh, my understanding is we're actually still having like farmers today. Uh, in Tasmania that claim they occasionally see one, but there hasn't been a confirmed site in quite a while, so they are listed as a, an extinct species, unfortunately. Um, they were The reason they were extinct is because those same farmers uh, basically took the same reaction that they, uh, we do to coyotes or wolves or anything, where it's an animal that's hunting our flocks, so we tend to uh, try to eliminate them, and unfortunately we were really good at eliminating the thylacines, so that's why Sadly, they are no longer with us, but we'll be bringing them back here today in spirit. Uh, hopefully, 
this will turn out right. Like I said, I haven't done the final walkthrough, so I'm just assuming that this is going to work out fine. But we'll go ahead here and get into some details. So you can see I've got the cable fence around sort of the outside area, and then I'm going to be putting uh, against that uh, night vision glass uh, some see-through areas. I went with the night vision glass there because my understanding is that seems uh, sort of like wolves. They do most of their hunting at night, so I figured it would be good to have an area where it kind of looked like we were simulating that nighttime environment for them. And it was a little too big to put an actual shelter in, so I went with this heated rock, hopefully coax them, and I put in a lot of like bones and stuff for them to play with. So just anything possible to coax them to walk into this area, which, you know, fingers crossed they will be doing pretty soon. And I actually have to do a little bit more construction here. Again, I'm putting down my wood floors. But uh, this area ended up actually being a little too small for a viewing area, so you'll see I'm working on that uh, in just a bit. In fact, I think that's what I do right here. I also had a long time trying to figure out what to do with the uh, ceiling here. Um, I'm still trying to... Uh, I've mentioned, I forget if it was in here or a different series, but uh, I'm trying a lot lately to uh, make multi-tiered roofs uh, that aren't just like one flat, completely perfectly level areas, because I find those uh, turn out much, much better, or at least uh, look much more interesting. But uh, I kind of went into here without a major plan. So you'll see what the idea is, is that I want to have like a glass entrance area, but at the same time have a white ceiling over the actual parts of the uh, area where the guest would be to examine the uh, thylacines. So I'm going to play around with it a bit here. Uh, just a few different chances. Eventually what I ended up having to do, you'll see, is backing like one area back. Backing one area back, that's not very descriptive. What I actually do is had to extend it so that instead of a 2x3 viewing area, it becomes a 3x3 three three viewing area. And that should make more sense, I hope. Um, and that was really just because, you see when I got in here, I just thought that area that you were supposed to actually view the thylacines in I looked really, really narrow, and it wasn't very accommodating or attractive looking. So just a quick, quick change here, and we're going to get this to come out just beautifully. That's the idea, at least. And some more of these beautiful wooden panels that I've started using everywhere. And I do apologize again if that's become repetitive, but nobody's complained yet, so I should probably stop apologizing from it and just go ahead and do it. <laughs> I, I apologize if the apologies are getting annoying at this point. I could understand that as well. And so you'll see that we're going ahead and putting a glass ceiling there, and then I'm going to change, I believe I changed this, yep. And annoyingly, that area did not come out smooth again, so I have to go in here and fix that real quick. And then I think it actually, for some reason, the game wouldn't let me get perfectly. Uh, the way you really need to flatten that out is kind of delete everything in the area and flatten it out, but I got annoyed and decided not to do that, so I'm going to cover it up with a bench later on. It's my final solution for <laughs> that issue. But, uh, go ahead and finish putting this glass in here. And again, I'm trying to just wrap around the edges of any of the white building plaster set with that uh, dark brown border, just to get a little contrast and make it look a little more interesting, which has turned out really well in the zoo so far, I think. And then the way I got this to finally look the way I wanted it to in my head was just kind of extend out this little uh, awning here just make it look a little bit more like you're entering into something that was pre-planned. Uh, for some reason, when you put that slanted glass roof right on the side, I don't think it looks quite right. So that's why I ended up with that awning there. Just, it's an aesthetic thing. If you think it looks right, by all means, go ahead and use it. There's nothing technically wrong with it. It just kind of bothers me for some reason. I can't explain it. But now it's time to go ahead and put in the main exhibit here. I'm starting to use these... Uh, uh, instead of just the coastal rocks, these ones that kind of have the green moss on them more and more, uh, I think they actually look a little bit better. And then I just threw a river in here. Uh, again, that's just an aesthetic thing. Um, I think putting in water areas into your exhibits look really good. Plus it allowed me to put these rocks here in that area that I kind of had the path and the borders of the fence diverging. It made it look a little bit more natural. If you do, do uh, put in water, I highly suggest that you kind of line some rocks around it. Uh, it just makes it look so much better, I, I think. It makes it look more like it's standing out. And then once you put rocks down, you're going to want to put foliage like going up against that rock. Um, 
The reason why I do that is because if this was a natural, like, area instead of a one that was man-made, uh, if a sea fell from the tree or was blowing in the reeds or something, it would hit across the rocks more often than not, and then fall to the ground instead of continuing on their course. That's why in real life there is more foliage, like, built up around rocks than there is, uh, just kind of scattered about. Obviously that's not a hard and fast rule, but that is something that does occur in nature, and so you kind of want to simulate that in your exhibit if you're trying to make it look natural. And you can also see I'm kind of trying to blur the edges of the exhibit by putting that really high grass uh, around the area there. Uh, okay, let me talk about this box elder, because you're going to see I'm going to have to delete it and put it in a few times. It's something, just a future note to myself and to anyone watching. Uh, if you have the option to put a tree in the middle of the path, do your trees last. Do all like the shorter grass and bushes first because uh, you're not going to be able to see through the tree. Uh, you can see trees on top of grass, you can't see grass through trees, so that's just something that I need to start doing for myself. Uh, but then I'm going to go ahead here and um, I go to grab some enrichment objects, some more of those bones, because like I said, they are wolves. They're doing about the same thing a wolf would. Um, they're not wolves, I should say, very carefully. They are marsupials that fill the same biological niche that wolves do. They are not wolves. Uh, we're not wolves, I guess, is to be absolutely 100% accurate. Uh, so, if I refer to them as wolves, please understand that I'm not saying that they are wolves. It's just me slipping on the tongue. Uh, I'll go ahead here. And I actually really, I don't think I've ever used that grass before, but I'm probably going to use it more often now, because I really like how that looks. Uh, particularly if I'm doing sort of a forest, rain forest, dry forest, tundra, what, or not tundra, but um, uh, temperate area. I think that works really, really well. And you can see I'm just using the shortest version of it here to kind of fill in that uh, part of the path that can't look directly into the exhibit. And I'm going to do the same thing over here, where I don't want the people to be able to look exactly in. I'll put in some rocks and some of these higher uh, ferns, and then towards the back, you drop some of that high, tall grass. So it's going to look as if that area is just receding into jungle. It's, uh, which is kind of the idea. You want it to make it look like that's not the edge of an exhibit, that that is really the internal side of a jungle that we're putting in. And now I'll go down to putting in my lovely, lovely flower motif. I am doing this all the time now. I do apologize. I'm doing this to my subscriber zoo as well. So, uh, again, it's something that might uh, get annoying to you if you have to see it over and over again, but I think it works so well. Um, for the type of zoos that I like to make that I do plan on using it a lot. So again, if it's super annoying, let me know. But if nobody says anything, you're going to see a lot of orange and white flowers decorating a lot of pathways in the future. Uh, so brace yourself for that, I guess is what I'm saying. And here's the part where I put down the tree before I put down the bushes. So clearly it's a falling in my in my uh, thinking. I gotta just kind of train myself not to do that from now on because it gets annoying real quick. But I also did remember to put in these juniper bushes up against that white wall with the uh, wooden top, which uh, I'm a big, big fan of as well. That's one of the things I really like about this zoo is um, not only am I really happy with how the thylacine exhibit turned out, as long as, um, you know, fingers crossed it works and the thylacines are able to go from the inside to the outside area and back, but uh, I really like the aesthetic that I picked for this zoo early on. Sometimes I've started zoos where I like two or three exhibits in start regretting my early decisions, but so far this is not one of those. Um, although I do end up regretting fairly quickly here putting these rose bushes in. I think they're a little too high, and you can see I just deleted that bur oak because it was in my way, so just note to self, don't do that. But we'll go ahead and put in the whites and oranges, back that tree up a little bit, and then decided that I was going to kind of make this an area that uh, guests could kind of sit in and uh, relax for a moment. So before I put the benches in there, I wanted to put in a uh, street lamp to kind of give it that uh, same, or carry on the ambiance that we created at the very first area there. I put down a couple of those near the benches, so I figured I would carry that into the park here to make it all look like one piece, which is always something that I find desirable to make it look like uh, there's one overall architect creating the look of a zoo. And there we go, just like that. At this point, I think I very stupidly put the bur oak back in. Is that what I'm dropping now? Yeah, bur oak. I'm gonna, you'll see I'll have to delete that again in the future. 
and I also decided at this point that I was going to get rid of the actual uh, railing there and just use the flowers to sort of suggest everything that's going on. So I'll be getting rid of those and moving it back. And so this will create the effect of um, having sort of a flower area right against the path. And then we're going to throw in these juniper bushes back here. So it looks makes it look a little more... Um, cultured is the word that's coming to mind, but that's not quite right. I might be confusing cultured and horticultured. Uh, but it makes it look more uh, like it was pre-planned, I guess, by uh, human-type people. Uh, but you see here, I'm just going to extend that out. And this way it looks like the uh, railing of the fence is specifically there to stop guests from like poking their fingers into the thylacine exhibit, which would be quite dangerous if we had a thylacine exhibit in real life. So that's definitely something that you would want to do. And uh, makes a nice little realism. Uh, do I end up going with these flowers? I don't think I do. They're a little too tall, I think, is what I ultimately decided. So I just put down this grass, which I love a lot, because it has those little daisies in it. But, uh, yeah, so that's pretty good for the pathway. At this point, I uh, return back to our actual exhibit. And you'll notice um, one thing I'm really proud of here is that I recess the uh, actual metal gates that you would, uh, in real life, use to get the thylacines in and out. Uh, it just helps hide that from the guest perspective a little bit. Uh, but when you're going in as a zookeeper, it seems uh, still real because you still have... Uh, these dangerous animals being held in by actual uh, metal bars like they really would probably be. Okay. And so we'll go ahead and take the time here to put in a nice little area for the zookeepers. Uh, that cabinet is actually a mistake. You'll see I have to move that because I forgot for a moment that I uh, needed to put in doors for the zookeepers. Uh, with these metal gates that you can get from Zuliope's equipment, they're going to allow you to slide a gate open and close to allow animals in and out, but it unfortunately, uh, you cannot walk through them in guest mode, so you have to devise other doors and other pathways for you to get around. And I did take the time when I was setting this up to put in those other doors and other pathways. I just forgot about it when I put down that uh, cabinet. That's going to be the wrong place. And here you can see I'm also raising the roof one level, just uh, going on with that opinion that higher or multi-level buildings just look better in this game for whatever reason. So I'm trying to incorporate that as much as possible at this point. And we'll go around here to make that a level 4, and I remembered to put the door in, I'm very happy about that. But I also uh, wrapped around here, and then I believe I put glass across the front there just to make it stick out a little bit more. And I'll wrap the pathway around here. I wanted to make it sure that the pathway didn't, like, directly go and that there was sort of a curved edge. And just to make it look like a more of a natural path, almost like you were sort of hiking through the woods. It wouldn't go straight diagonal. I try to avoid straight diagonals whenever possible in my zoo paths. I just don't like the look of them. Again, that's just an aesthetic thing of mine. But uh, if you're asking me for design tips, I would recommend uh, keeping... Uh, exact straight corners uh, off the path, if ever possible. And I would also recommend um, trying to hide the where your fences disappear. Like right here, I don't want the, uh, the fence that's right around the path to go all the way to the entrance of our uh, indoor area for the thylacine. So what I ended up doing was taking the sort of uh, grains of sacks of burlap or whatever they're supposed to be and I just put them right at the edge of the uh, where that fence was and then I put these barrels down and a couple of these I don't think I actually ended up putting any of the boxes down but just sort of like a uh, make it look like there's a supplies or something stacked up on the side here uh, which looks kind of interesting but really what I'm trying to do is just disguise the fact that I'm actually ending that fence there in the middle of nowhere so uh, I actually think it turns out pretty well. Like, uh, again, I haven't done the final walkthrough, though, so maybe maybe I'll hate it. Uh, if that's the case, I'll go change it. But I did check it real here. I think that works pretty well. And at this point, it becomes me to uh, fill in these little areas. I'm just going to use these hibiscus that I, I really like. They were the perfect height, so I'm definitely going to use them more and more if I keep 
putting in little boxes like that. And at this point, we're just kind of tweaking the edges and trying to find little places to like put a uh, bench down there. Ultimately, I decided not to, but you get the idea. Just kind of check those places, make it look uh, as functional a zoo as possible. I always try for functionality. And at this point, I finally put in the outside wall of the fence, extended that area a little bit. Uh, I really wanted to put that outside area of the fence down just so I kind of had an idea of how much room I was working with. And you can see I brought the path right to the edge just so we'd have enough room to fill in those juniper bushes. And then I changed that from dirt to grass. Usually I use dirt because if you make dirt, everything tends to be a little bit flatter. Uh, but since I wasn't going to put anything in this area, I just left grass. And we could still walk through those juniper bushes to get in here as a zookeeper, you can see. And at that point, here is where I realized that I goofed that I needed to move that out of the way there. And now I'm going to go ahead and put in the doors for the zookeepers. And I almost put that on the wrong side, actually. So <laughs> it took me a little bit, but I, I remembered where I did. So I planned it right. I just was kind of stupid about it. And then I realized that I hadn't put down pathways for the zookeepers to walk through. <laughs> and uh, so I had this all planned out really, really smart to begin with, I absolutely swear. But uh, So we'll go ahead and throw down here Thylocene Keeper Sawyer. And he has to have like 12 different assignments because there's so many little areas in this uh, gate. But I gave him a bench on the inside too. Okay, we're here at the final walkthrough. You can see we're right here at the Dodo exhibit. And we'll just go ahead and head down. I haven't decorated the right side because I'm leaving that until we decide what to do with our next exhibit. Uh, but you can see I've, oop, and there's a little gap there. I'm probably going to have to fill in some flowers between that orange and the juniper. But uh, I'm, I'm not going to make you suffer through that right now. I'm just going to keep checking out this area. And we'll turn around here and take a look at our thylacines here in the outside area. And I think this actually turned out really well. I am very, very happy with this exhibit. Um, We'll go ahead and take a snapshot here. And uh, I should mention thylacines, they do come with the Endangered Species Pack, but I'm using the uh, Radical Remake skins for them, so they're going to look a little bit better than they do in the actual Zoo Tycoon 2 game. Uh, the ones that come with it are a little too cartoony, if you ask me. But we'll go around this area. You'll see I've completely blocked out uh, that part of the fence, so it seems like there's two viewing areas for the thylacines. Something I like to put down. Oh, here's one taking a little nap in this area. That's pretty cool. He's doing it right in the grass, too. Yeah, hello, Mr. Thylacine. Oh, there's one back there kind of caught on the rocks. So maybe I have a hitbox here. I might tweak that slightly off screen then. But we'll go around here and you can see the sacks kind of just make it so you don't notice the fence disappearing as much, hopefully. And we'll go into our inside viewing area. And let's see, are there any in the inside area at this moment? Okay, there is one there. Okay, so that's that's fine. Mm, I was really hoping that they can walk in between the areas without looking too bad. But I do like the look of that, how that turned out. You can kind of see that recessed gateway there, which I think looks a little bit better. Uh, but now let's go ahead and take a peek at this as if we were zookeepers. So we're going to run through the juniper real quick. And we'll go around to this door. And hopefully everything will be working here. I haven't gone inside yet, so. All right, so we got obviously our cages there so we can separate off uh, male and females or two males if they're getting aggressive during the mating season. Um, we can go in here obviously and take care of them. But if we need to get access to the outside part of the exhibit, it's through these doorways here. We actually have to open three doors just to be annoying. I guess I could take it out one of those. But and we're doing pretty good. Looks like they're moving around fine. And you can see those tiger stripes. That's why they're called Tasmanian tigers sometimes. Although, again, uh, they fill the, nuf, the wolf niche instead of the tiger one. They're not solitary hunters, pack hunters, uh, or pack hunters, I guess, and things like that. Nobody's eaten from this pack yet, so nobody's eaten from this uh, water dish, I should say. Yeah, I really do like how this one turned out. I'm kind of proud of this one. Now, unfortunately, the one thing I really want to see, I don't see, and that's them walking in between the two areas. But let's go ahead and go into that other area, and we'll make a right-hand turn this time. And if this gate will open, thank you. And we'll go... Oh, oh, there is one! There's another one in there. Was that the same one as before? Okay, so 
there's that bench in case. Yeah, okay, I almost got turned around there. And, oh, yeah, okay, so there are two in here now. So you can, obviously they can walk from the outside to the inside. He must be stuck. But I didn't put one in there to begin with. So you got yourself in there, you'll have to get yourself out, Mr. Thylacine. That's, that dims the rules. And you must have been outside a moment ago. So good job finding this place here. So yes, it does work as I functionally hope, that they have to go through sort of their uh, indoor cage area with the gatekeepers, but then they can go from the inside to the outside at their own discretion. That makes me very, very happy. Let's go back outside here. Boom. Uh, little itch. Little itch guy. And there's our zookeeper. Hopefully our zookeeper is smart enough to go from the inside to the outside as well, although they tend to be a little dumber than the animals. But anyway, that is our thylacine exhibit. Uh, like I've said a few times now, I'm really happy with that turned out. But if you guys have any suggestions on how to make it better, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. Even if you don't have suggestions, I would like you to like, comment, and subscribe, because that's what makes me and YouTube happy, as we discussed before. Anyway, thank you for spending your time with me today, and I hope you have a great rest of the day.